a few people have asked me lately um, if I would do a few more paintings that are a bit more realistic and uh, not so many of the kind of um, expressive mark making, doodling types of things. And um, that's definitely an interesting thing because um, I've noticed that since I started doing YouTube, um, my ability to paint has changed. The things I want to paint has changed. And it seems to be sort of like in line with the way things are changing online. And I've just been spending a few minutes doing two things. Um, exploring some paints. These ones here, these are uh, the Viviva. This is a Viviva color sheet booklet, which I've taken to pieces. I have a tendency to do this. Um, I'm a bit destructive. I think people would probably think I was very destructive. Um, they come like this, and I think they're really handy to have. And some people find that they can paint using the colours fixed together like this. Um, myself, personally, I find that too uh, slow. I, I, like to, I like to paint more quickly than I can if I have to flick through the pages and wait for them to dry before I can go to the next one, because they get very messy, um, you know, because if you, obviously, if you wet this one, then you close it, then the paint from there is going to go on here and, and so on. But it's what I like about the Viviva colours and why I would recommend you to buy some is um, that they are incredibly vibrant. Now, don't let me go off track because I'm talking about colour and I'm talking about painting and subjects for painting. And so, OK, this morning I was thinking, OK, I'm going to paint an autumn scene and I'm going to use the Viviva colours because they're so they're so good and um, bright. So I separated out a couple of packs of these, and I've I'm only going to use this side of them. And here we have um, all these autumn colours. We've got earth brown at the top. This is what the colours look like, and they're painted earth brown, tree bark brown, brick red. That comes out lighter if you. Don't use it so thickly. Autumn leaf, burnt sienna. Then we've got crimson, dusk orange, pastel orange, and happy yellow. And that's brilliant colours, aren't they, for autumn, with just a little bit of um, sort of um, cooling effect of blue and green. So sap green and ink blue, which operate, obviously, as complements to these colours. And if you mix any of these with these, you're going to get a dark dark brown or a dark grey or um, even black. So that's that's good. That set of colours here that I've arranged there is enough to paint almost anything with. I'll just move that down a bit so you can see. Um, they don't last very long. As you can see, this one's pretty much worn out. Um, that one too, that's from an old, older set. But they're fun and sometimes that's what you need and they're not expensive. Just a bit of fun. Something you can take with you in the car if you want to paint on the go with a with a water brush like this one. Yeah, that's the thing to do. I don't know. What have I got in there? That looks like it might have blue paint in it. Don't know what I've been up to there. I've forgotten all about that. Anyway, uh, water brushes. Oh, you can get a nice set of those from Meaden. They sent me these. I haven't opened them yet. Perhaps I should try painting with them today. I don't know. I don't think I will. But anyway, if you want water brushes, there's a lot in there. They're all different sizes. They've got this one here is a um, a flat brush, and that one too, I think. And then the others are sort of different sizes of rounds. So that's a good set. You can go to our website and find that. Anyway, so I thought, mm, okay. So we're going to do a an autumn scene. So I got the colours out and I did the background here. And then I just kind of doodled some um, trees on top of it, which I thought was quite fun. And that might be something you might want to do. And what I did was um, I just picked up my brush, got my Princeton here, and I just started with the lightest colour and I just put bits of each colour on the page. And then once I'd filled, filled the whole thing with colour, I just took some water and just smushed, smushed it around a bit. I have 
to put my teeth in. I'll be able to talk better then. Uh, and then I had this nice kind of patchy, autumn-y kind of coloured background. And then I did it again, but in the middle I left a space for a house. So I did that. And then I realised that my mushrooms look like lollipops, so I'll have to do that all again. That's no good. Um, and then I thought, oh, I think I'll have a look on Pinterest. So get some ideas. So I went to Pinterest and I was sort of scrolling through Pinterest pictures for a bit. And then suddenly I thought, oh, my goodness, I am completely overwhelmed by all of these images. And I know what the reason is now why uh, so many people are doing mark making. I don't know if they realise it, but it's become uh, apparent to me. I think I'm getting overloaded with images. So I think the thing to do is to paint more simply. And that means, that means simplifying things and not trying to put in detail and so on, but just to try to use colour rather than form to do what you want to do. And one of the ways of doing, doing that is paint with a great big brush and acrylic, <coughs> sorry, acrylic or oil paint and on a canvas and just kind of splash it all around. Um, but we're watercolorists, so we can't do that. So I'm going to have a go at doing something which is autumnal, but very based on color rather than anything else. And so I'm going to start, I'm going to start at the bottom and I don't know whether this is going to work or not. I'm going to start at the bottom with some green. And this is going to be, for example, a tree. I'm working on Canson um, XL watercolour mixed media paper. Because um, this is quite tough stuff and you can scrape it all off if you don't like what you've done and start again. So I've put some green there and then I'm going to put some orange uh, here. And I'm going to try to leave gaps. I don't know how this is going to work. I haven't done this before. I didn't practice this, in other words, this morning. Um, and then I'm going to go for the ink blue and I'm going to put some really dark colour down here and kind of hope that it's going to run. That might be a bit too much, but anyway, we'll come up here a bit and sort of go behind that tree. And put some more blue up here. It's very, very intense. If I drag that up to the top, we can call that sky. And I'll just get rid of this messiness there. If you do this, you can put some, you can imagine that those are sort of mountains in the distance you've just dabbed out. And then in the foreground here, I'm going to try for a larch type of thing. So we'll use this, what they call pastel orange. Oh, there's a bit of green on there. So all we're doing is just basically filling the page with colour. And the nice thing about this paper is, like I said, it does let you um, smush and go over it and 
so on and so forth. And I'm kind of thinking to myself, I'm feeling as if I'm painting in oil or something like that rather than watercolour, just because I am overloaded with images that you... And you, you know what? You don't know whether the images that you're looking at are have been done by a person or whether they were done by a, dare I say it, computer. I want that to be blurry, but I don't want it to look like uh, fur. A place, a time and a place for fur, and it's not here. And then perhaps we'll go back to the dark blue um, and mix that with a bit of green and put in here. a fir tree and perhaps the blue again, more blue than green. It's a little bit of red. And I'll put another one in here that's, that's a different colour. Okay, and um, I'm going to smush here a bit, lighten that up a bit. And here also I'm going to come in with a little bit more orange there. Orange, dusk orange, maybe. It's a nice bright colour here. And I think the thing is to just try and enjoy the colour, you know, if you can. And this nice big yellow tree here, what we want is some a nice autumny, darker, slightly darker um, autumn leaf colour. And we can put in some branches. Mix it with a bit more red, we can put some branches in down here if we can. I'm not sure if it's dry enough yet, but we can try. Go back to the yellow, and the orange. No, not the orange, the yellow. Maybe a little bit of orange mixed in. And some green. Good. Some 
round down here maybe. And then we could probably drop in some leaves up here. And over here perhaps. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely true that you can get overwhelmed by the images that are out there. Well, I do. I, I'd be interested to know whether other people sometimes find the same thing. And I, I think it's probably harmful, actually. I think it is probably harmful. I don't mean that copying I'm not talking really about copying I don't I don't think that's that harmful I think copying something that you've seen that you like is probably a good thing um, or using better still using and I do this um, using an idea that you see as a basis for your own interpretation and I know a lot of you do that I don't think there's anything wrong with that um, What am I saying? Yeah, but it's just looking at the different images and just, yeah, you know, uh, I think I want to make that a bit lighter. Yeah. And up here perhaps. And having, having done this, then you are going to think to yourself, okay, there comes a point at which you say, right, I'm going to let it dry and decide whether or not this is something that I like that I've done or whether I think it's completely rubbish. Uh, just dab some of that out a bit. Or whether I'm going to go over it with a um, pen or something like that or gouache or something. Or just say, well, that was a nice way to spend 10 minutes, which is also... A good thing. So I'm just going to let that dry or dry it and I'll come straight back. So I've just taken a little bit of um, Dr. Martin's here, Big Proof White, and I've mixed it with some of these yellows here, as you can see. And I'm just going to pretend that I'm doing a gouache painting and just drop in a few highlights here and there in this yellowish tree up here just to break up the masses and uh, come down here a bit and here. It'll look a little bit different once it's dry as well. So we'll do that and then perhaps we'll put a little bit of that down here. Perhaps I'll mix it with some brown and we can have some sort of mid-tones here as well. I don't want to make it look too fragmented. Um, and then maybe I will get rid of that brownish colour and I'm not entirely happy with this. I want to put some more um, lighter blue in there. So we will go for a bit of that. So break in with the grey. And I'm not sure how much this is going to dry lighter, you know. But I'm a bit happier with that. And then I, I might put another another tree here. And maybe we'll put a little bit of this green down here, maybe. Maybe not. Uh, maybe here. Uh, 
Right, having done that, I'm going to let that dry too. So there we are, there's the final painting. It's a, basically, it's a study in colour. And uh, I was trying just to get to the essence of the colours of autumn for you. I hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of a ramble around the paint box today. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. Ask any questions in the comments below. And I'll see you again soon. And um, Zen says bye-bye. And Arthur says bye-bye. Isn't it good to see a cat and a dog sleeping so close together? Oh, there's another one down there too. That's naughty. Everybody's asleep. But if I was to say the magic word, dinner, they'd all be leaping up. So I won't do that. So good night, everybody. <laughs> Look at Arthur. <laughs> and Zen and Lottie. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.